In May of this year, the UK government introduced a new bill which legally recognises all animals with backbones as sentient. That's right, you're surrounded by sentient creatures, and if that's making you think of something like this, don't worry, you're not alone, and you're confusing it with sapience. Now, these two words sound pretty similar, and a lot of people use them interchangeably, but they mean very, very different things. And today, we're going to take a look at them. Welcome back to the Dark Wolf Project. First up, let's deal with sentience. Now, sentience is basically the capacity to have feelings. Now, that's not the same as having emotions. According to neurologist Antonio Damasio, interviewed back in 2005 by Scientific American, emotions are the physical bodily response to external stimuli. Feelings, however, are the conscious acknowledgement of those responses. Think of a dog wagging its tail when its owner approaches. The emotion is simply the reaction, the response that the dog is physically showing. The feeling, which in this case is joy, is the dog being consciously aware that it is experiencing this emotion. Now, here in the UK, any animal which can display an emotional response is considered sentient. Back in 2009, the RSPCA put forward a set of criteria to define what an emotional response is, and this includes detecting the release of endorphins in a creature's brain in response to pain. This shows that it is experiencing an emotional response and, as far as they are concerned, is considered sentient. They are arguing here that the neurological activity is evidence that the creature is experiencing feelings as it's aware of the pain. As a quick side note, you might remember the Yawning Wolf video from a few weeks back. Now that's evidence that an emotional response isn't necessarily triggered by a physical stimulus. It can be contagious. So sentience, overly simplified a bit, is animals with backbones recognising that they have emotions. Now technically it's not just animals with backbones that can experience feelings, but if you want to find out about this a bit more in depth then have a look down in the description and you can find the source material I've used. So sapience should be just as easy, right? Once again, let's just start with the basic definition. Look up sapient in the dictionary, and you'll find something to the effect of possessing of great sagicity. Now, that's understandable because sapience is derived from Latin sapienza, which means possessing of wisdom. Carl Linnaeus actually chose this as the word to describe our species, Homo sapiens. He believed that possessing wisdom was the defining trait of our species, separating us from other animals. So, what is wisdom then? Well, that's uh, it's a really difficult question to answer. In fact, the concept of wisdom kind of inhabits this grey area between neurology and philosophy. It's kind of hotly debated and I expect probably will be for the foreseeable future. I'm going to do my best to try and keep things simple for this video though. So, I've adapted some of Professor George Mobus's text from 2005. Wisdom is basically the ability to make sound judgments that guide our decision processes when cleverly solving problems, with specific reference to issues that have a much wider and longer term scope than any other animal in nature. He follows that up with, and I quote, There seems to be ample evidence that the majority of we humans are not wise in any real meaningful way. And he has a point. We're prone to making bad decisions as individuals, and as a species, we've made some worse ones. So humans aren't a great textbook example of what sapience actually is, but for the purposes of keeping this video short, let's just compare the two definitions side by side. Sentience 
Animals, including us, who are aware that they have feelings. Sapiens, humans who can make informed, sound judgments and decisions in the long term. So you can see now the importance of not getting those two terms confused. If you are campaigning for animal rights or the ethical treatment of animals, then maybe this will help lend a bit of weight to your arguments by using the correct terms properly. As always, the sources I've used for all of this are down in the video description. And if you'd like to help out with my project, then you can find me on social media. Just type this in on the search box. And if you want to help out even further, why not have a look at my website? You can find artwork and merchandise that I've created with a natural science theme and the proceeds from this go directly towards helping my friends who carry out vital field work and research. So, here's the statement I'm going to leave you with today. We may be of the species wise man, but that wisdom isn't inherent. If you want our species to live up to its name, Homo sapiens, then try considering how your decisions today affect the world around you, not just immediately, but into the future. Thank <laughs> you.